Day five of the Olympic Games is now over. And listen, the subject or the message to remember from day five outside of everything that happened, Mondo DePlantis is not from this planet. We break it down here on Track Talk. Day five was unique, man. Day five was amazing. It truly was one for the books in so many different ways. It was high intensity all the way through. There was a lot of preliminaries when it comes to the men's 200. We did the semifinals of the women's 200, but there was some drama involved. And we're gonna get to that as we recap everything. Uh, as I said, you had the preliminaries of the men's 200. The first round of that was today. Second round of the women's 200, the semifinals round, which was insane in its own right. Gabby Thomas had the fastest qualifying time, 21.86. Julian Alfred had ran 21.9, and they both looked incredible doing it. The men's 400 meter hurdles, that was uh, the first round of that. Qualification for the women's pole vault, when it comes to the first round of that. Uh, the repassage round for the women's 400 meter hurdles, the Reposage round for the men's 400 meter hurdles, the first round of the women's 400. So much was going on, but I think we need to talk about the greatness of Mondo Duplantis. And if he is not in your category for the GOAT when it comes to all sports, the pole vault, you have to be incredibly brave because there's it's a high risk, high reward event. Because if that pole breaks and you're 20 feet in the air, bad things could happen. But Mondo Duplantis, John Anderson, uh, formerly with ESPN, he came on the show, if you all remember, if you all watched that episode, and said Mondo might touch snow. He may come down with snow, That how high he's vaulting. 6.25 meters, 20 feet, 6 inches. Y'all, that is stupid. On his third attempt, he cut his hand. He set the Olympic record, and in the process, he cut his hand. And on his last attempt, he broke his own world record. I was in the stadium in Eugene, Oregon when he broke his world record, his then world record, last year at the Prefontaine Classic, which was the Diamond League final. And let me tell you something, that dude is different. He is built different. He is different in the best way possible. And I think if you don't have him in the GOAT conversation, something is wrong with you because you really need to put him in there because he's unbelievable. He's unbelievable. He's a joy to watch. He's great for the sport and he keeps elevating. You talk about somebody who has elevated the pole vault and elevated athletics. It is freaking Mondo Duplantis. So big shout out to him and what he was able to accomplish. Let's stick with the field events. Valerie Allman, she was the champion in Tokyo. She brought it home again with a phenomenal throw through almost 70 meters, uh, 69 and a half meters is what it was marked as. A thing from China had a, a chance to kind of get into that uh, position to challenge Allman, but she took home the silver. Valerie has been consistent. Obviously, Logi Tasanga pulled off a phenomenal feat in winning last year at the World Championships. And that was Allman's, I, I don't know the last time she lost at a major championship, um, at least kind of in that respect. But Allman is somebody who is entertaining to watch in the women's discus. She always has been, and she continues to elevate. And I don't think she gets the attention and respect that she deserves because the discus is a very difficult event. The field events in general just don't get the respect that they deserve. And that is something that obviously is a point of discussion all the time. Uh, but I had to give her a quick shout out for the great things that she did. Let's talk the women's 800. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Oh man. Keely Hodgson, she's been stepping different all year long. And when the pressure kind of came because she led the entire race and she stayed composed, she knew what the women of Africa were going to do and she stayed composed. She did not freak out and she stepped up in that last hundred meters and she separated Mary Mor Mary Mora rather and Duguma from Ethiopia. Listen, they were there, they were there. They made a charge. 
but Hodgson put her foot in the ground, took home the win. 156.72 was the final time that got her her first gold medal. I cannot wait for the return of a thing Mo, because I think the two of them pushing each other, Mo's gonna have a chip on her shoulder and it's going to propel her to great things. And she, along with Hodgson, that rivalry is amazing. It's a great rivalry because they get the best out of each other and they have the utmost respect for each other. And I know for a fact that the two of them next year and years to come, they're gonna be pushing each other to get that world record, that 153 world record. So I'm really excited for the future, but I gotta give mad props to Keeley because she earned this she really wanted this she worked hard for this and it was her time to win so major props to her last but not least we got to got to got to talk about the women's 5k and the drama that ensued so there was a point in the race i think it was with three laps to go that faith kipyagon faith kipyagon and gusaf Sagay got tangled up. I think Faith may have grabbed her arm. Sagay basically <laughs> shoved her off the track. They were trying to get room because it was tight in there. They were bunched. And threw Faith off a little bit. They were in a in a big group. Um, it was Sagay, uh, Chabet, Kip Kipugan, and some other runners. I know Elise Cranny from Team USA was in there as well. Um, and what ended up happening is Chabet out sprinted the legend Faith Kipigon in the end and ended up taking the win 14-28-56. Well, Faith got DQ'd, which I don't know about. I, I don't know about it's the Olympics. There's, I don't think that was a disqualification. Um, it's a play on and everything because contact was made from both parties. But as it stands right now, this is subject to change. As it stands, Chibet is the winner no matter what. But Safan Hassan moves into the silver medal um, with her time of 1430, which is insane because Hassan's going to still run the 10K and then the marathon. And if I'm not mistaken, she's running the 1500 too. I don't know. It's just crazy. She's different. She's step. You talk about somebody who's stepping different. She's stepping different. And then the Italian, uh, her name fails me. Forgive me. I don't want to get her name wrong. Um, but Takledi, I if I screwed that up, I know I did. Nadia, let's go by your first name. Nadia, she came in third place as of now. Uh, with her time of 1431, she ran a remarkable race. And forgive me, sometimes the names fail me, even though I just watched the race, and that is my bad. But she ran a phenomenal race, a phenomenal race. And I am really excited for her. If it stands, that's such a tricky situation because you're riding high one minute, and then they can say, okay, the appeal has been successful, and then Faith gets the medal back. So, uh, but as of now, that's where it stands. Tomorrow is going to be pretty fun as well. Tomorrow is the sixth day of the Olympics, and we're going to look at a really three finals, four finals that I'm really excited about. Well, all I'm excited about all of them. But the women's 200 is going to be something you don't want to miss. I don't know if a world record is going to be broken, but I'm telling you, Gabby Thomas has the fresher legs, but Julian Alfred is ready. It's crazy that she had to be convinced to run the women's 200, but that is going to be a matchup I cannot wait to see. The women's 3,000 meter steeplechase. There are so many heavy hitters in that race, and I am so excited to see who comes out on top. And then we have the men's long jump which is going to be good the women's hammer throw final but the men's 1500 meters you have Jakob Inger Vixen versus Josh Kerr and then you mix in the likes of Cole Hawker as well as Yarat Magoose y'all and don't forget the Africans the chariot and just so many others I'm trying to tell you they are going to be stepping different in that event. And another sneaky one to watch out for is the preliminaries. How do how does Faith Kipyagon and Safan Hassan and all of these other athletes bounce back um, when it comes to 
the 1500 because Sagay, if I'm not mistaken, Sagay is in a different heat um, than Faith and everything. So it's going to be really exciting to see. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, there's going to be a lot of great action that is involved. Forgive me, Hassan's not running the 1500. Forgive me on that. Just had to fact check. Hey, we're doing live fact checks. Everything's happening so fast trying to get that video out. So I do apologize for that. But what I do not apologize for is my appreciation for the support that you guys have given this platform in the show. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you do, like, subscribe, comment, share it out, share it with the people you know and you love who's looking for some entertainment. Follow us on social media, Lactic Acid Podcast, when it comes to to our instagram account wherever you get your podcast be sure to listen in as well love peace and chicken grease and i'm out